All right there, everyone, move over, yellow vest. Make way for the blue vest uprising as even French police are beginning to protest Macron. That's what we'll be talking about on today's video. If you could believe it, and I'm, well, I'm sure you can, things just keep getting worse for the supposed savior of globalism, Emmanuel Macron. First, of course, you had the yellow vest uprising, which began in Paris and soon enveloped the entire French nation with over a quarter of a million demonstrators nationwide, and which garnered a 70% approval rating among the French population. If you recall, it was first met with the most arrogant and pathetic dismissal by Macron. He called the uprisers just a bunch of thugs, and the French police treated them accordingly. You know, pretty brutal stuff. <laughs> but then when Macron found out that this, you know, 70% of the nation agreed with the protesters, he appeared contrite and apologetic and basically threw the protesters a bunch of scraps in the hopes of buying them off and buying back his fledgling political future. Then on top of that, you had a major terrorist attack, which took place in the vicinity of the Christmas market in the historic French city of Strasbourg, where a gunman opened fire on a crowd near the Christmas market, killing four, injuring 12. And it was discovered that the shooter was, in fact, an ISIS-inspired Moroccan immigrant. You had a, then a no-confidence vote in the French parliament, which Macron survived, of course. And you have a plum, I mean, literally plummeting approval ratings of under 20%, which were significantly lower than Macron's predecessor, Francois Hollande, and Alain, remember, was one of the most, he was the single most unpopular French president in the last several decades. Now, on top of all that, Macron is facing another strike, and this time it's being called the Blue Vest Uprising, with French police protesting overwork and thousands of unpaid hours, largely due to the Yellow Vest Uprising. Now, in particular, airport police have instituted what they're calling a deliberate slowdown, where they're basically dragging their feet at passport check-in lines at airports, creating these just massive long lines of waiting and obviously disgruntled passengers. And this was done in the midst of the Alliance Police Union, calling on all police officers across France to respond only to emergencies while the Alliance continued to negotiate with the Interior Ministry over pay and compensation over weeks of overtime work in response to the massive yellow vest movement. By the way, this whole blue vest uprising just gives us an idea of just how massive the yellow vest uprising really was. If it was overloading the entire French police force throughout the nation, you don't have to be a genius to figure out just how massive the yellow vest protests have been over the last several weeks. Oh, so much for a bunch of thugs, eh, Macron? Now, the uh, concern here is that the French Parliament has just passed, I think it was just before the Yellow Vest uprising, they passed a 62 million euro cut in the national police budget, which could not have come at a worse time. And so the Alliance Police Union is basically halting first responder services outside of real emergencies until they procure agreement on compensation in the midst of both the budgetary cuts and the Yellow Vest protests. Now, Needless to say, the Blue Vest Uprising is but part of the overall ripple effect of the Yellow Vest Uprising. When they first broke out, we noted that there have been a number of studies over the last few years that have indicated that France really was a powder keg ready to blow. One scholar in particular talks about the rise in anger and frustration in what he calls peripheral France, which is made up of populations that had been driven from urban centers throughout the nation, largely because of uh, gentrification as well as deindustrialization. Uh, we have to remember that glo globalism basically creates what's called a global division of labor, where manufacturing and industrial jobs, factory jobs, are shipped out to third world nations, while capital and finance are relocated to urban centers, creating a gentrification that increases the cost of living in urban areas. And this process has left rural populations disenfranchised from viable living conditions in urban areas, as well as being highly unemployed in rural areas. So you can't win either way. You have French citizens who don't have the money to live in Paris, but who can't work in their rural areas because of the high unemployment that came about as a result of this global division of labor. This is the problem of deindustrialization and gentrification. And so one scholar in particular 
has pointed to the growth of what he calls peripheral France, which is made up of people who can't live in urban centers, but who can't necessarily find jobs in rural areas. So they more and more feel like they've been completely shut out from the national conversation and decision making regarding their future. And to make matters even worse, between the years of 2004 and 2013, France spent nearly 40 billion euros to refurbish and rebuild mainly ethnic minority housing centers throughout their cities, but they didn't spend anything even remotely like that on similar depressed areas inhabited by native French citizens. So just right here with the 40 billion euro project to rebuild many ethnic minority enclave housing, just with that example alone, you can see why French police officers would be just a tad bit ticked off to hear that the budget for their pay has been cut by 60 million euro. You got 40 billion for immigrant housing, but you can't find 60 million euro for natural born French citizens who are police officers. Now we talked about this on other videos. Some recent polling throughout Europe asked voters whether they thought traditional parties and politicians just simply don't care about them. And that was the statement that they needed to respond to. Traditional parties and politicians don't care about people like me and my concerns. Again, would you like to take a guess which nation had the highest percentage of voters agreeing with that statement? That traditional parties and politicians don't listen to them, don't care about them? The nation with the highest percentage of voters who agreed with that statement was none other than France. 78% of voters in France responded affirmatively to the statement that their politicians don't care about them or their concerns. This is why we've begun to see this absolute implosion of the traditional parties in France. Remember, the socialists ruled France for several years until Macron's election 2017, right? The French Socialist Party was the one of the most powerful parties in the entire nation. But as of the 2017 election, they were all but wiped out of existence. The socialists, who again, keep in mind, were ruling. They were ruling France since 2012. The socialists in the last national election, 2017, were reduced to barely 6% in the presidential election and 7% in legislative elections. I'll give you another example just how bad it is, in particular here for the French socialists. Eatwell and Goodwin talk about this in their book on the rise of uh, national populism in Europe. If you were looking in the Paris papers not too long ago, you would be reading this, you'd be reading about this utterly exquisite property for sale, okay? It was in a prime location, very nice sized property, nearly 3,500 square meters on the city's chic left bank. The price tag was pretty hefty. It was in excess of a cool 30 million euros. But if you were a seasoned observer of French politics, you would read that real estate ad more like an obituary, more like a death notice. And that's because this grand, beautiful property had been for decades the headquarters of the French socialists who were now forced to sell it due to fears of bankruptcy. That's how bad it is for one of the key members of France's traditional political parties. So this latest protest now from France's national police force, far from being just another typical French protest, is but another indicator that globalist France is really about to unravel. It is coming apart. Peripheral France, as one scholar calls it, those tens of millions of French who've felt like they've been completely shut out of this new globalist world order. They are awakening. They are rising. And they're ready to take their nation back and with it, the future of European civilization. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our new online merchandise selection where you can get gear and apparel celebrating all things nationalist and populist. And of course, get that special Christmas time discount of 15% off all items by entering the promotion code below. And if you would, please click on either our Patreon subscribe star or PayPal links below. Become a supporter of this channel. As you know, we are periodically demonetized by YouTube. We were just demonetized the other day. And we could really use your help so we can continue to analyze current events in light of awesome conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. God bless.